guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a makeup tutorial and we're going to be using the Modern Renaissance Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I really, really, really like this palette. I really like the packaging. It's like this nice like suede material and I think that it's absolutely stunningly gorgeous. I really kind of um, dug deep in it today. I think all of the colors are very universal. I think this was done amazingly because there are some neutrals for people who don't want to go bold, but then there are some color options for girls and guys out there who like to add a little bit of color into their life. So I think that that's a really, really good option right here is this palette. I used it on my eyes today and I'm like absolutely obsessed with this look. I hope that you guys enjoy this makeup tutorial. Um, I really don't have anything else to tell you guys except I will be going out of town in a couple weeks. So the next couple videos you'll see after this one are going to be pre-filmed. Just letting you guys know, I thought I would get some ready for you guys. So let me know in the comments what you guys want to see so then I can kind of maybe create the videos that you guys want to see while I'm away. So without further ado, if you guys want to see how to achieve this makeup tutorial using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette, then just keep watching. Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a makeup tutorial using the Modern Renaissance Palette. And we're jumping in with a Sigma E40 brush and raw sienna in the palette. And this is just a nice warm shadow. I'm obsessed with this palette because it is filled with warm tones. I know a lot of people like different tones, but I'm more of a warm tone kind of person. You guys absolutely know that. And I'm just taking this raw sienna from inner to outer corner on the E40, just really buffing back and forth. And then once there's, once there's nothing on my brush, I will start buffing it upwards just for a nice gradient. And I really, really like to take my time in the beginning steps of the transition shade because that will help us later on with blending out whatever other shadows we go in with. So now I'm taking the Sigma E25 and some of the shade Red Ochre. It's just like a nice, like dark, rich brick color. I know that it's not translating that way on the like, on my eye, but that's what it looks like in the palette, and I'm kind of just doing a light hand, really focusing this on the outer corner and dragging it through the crease all the way to the inner corner, and then just taking that Sigma E40 brush and a little bit more of that raw sienna and just kind of buffing that out. I like to go in steps, so I will go back and forth building up the pigment of each shadow, blending it out, building it up, blending it out. That's just the way that works for me, giving myself a nice, rich look, but also a very blended look. Blending takes time. Eyeshadow takes time, so it's not going to be like a five-second thing, but just to let you guys know, I like to take my time with blending back and forth, adding more color. That's why it's so like vibrant and blended at the same time. So I'm going to take that same Sigma E25, and I'm going to dip into Cypress Umber, and that's like a nice dark brown in the palette. It's translating more on the cool tone side, and I'm focusing this on the outer corner, and as you guys see, I will go in a couple different times to build up the pigmentation of the shadow, just because I wanted to go really light-handed at first, because sometimes it can look, like, very muddy and very messy, so make sure to take your time when you're blending, and a little by little, and also your tools are what are going to help. So now I'm going to take Primavera, which is this nice gold champagne color, and I'm going to be applying that with this Anastasia Beverly Hills, I think it's like an A18 or an A12 brush. This is definitely sim similar to the MAC 242, and I'm actually obsessed. So I'm just packing this onto the lid, and then I will take my Sigma E25, and I will take a little bit more of that Cypress Umber color, and I will start blending the two together so it's kind of a little seamless. I zoomed you guys in so you guys could see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So I'm just taking a little bit of the shadow, just going back and forth, blending these shades together kind of flawlessly because I don't like it to be such a sharp contrast between the dark and the lid shade. So I'm going to just be applying it the same way over here, kind of cutting the crease a little bit. And then I will take the E25 and start blending that together. And now I'm going to be taking the Roller Lash Mascara before we apply false lashes. And I did use a different pair of lashes today than I'm used to. I did use flutter lashes. I can't even remember the style, but those will be linked down below if you guys are curious what I used. But I was at, I bought them at Fame Expo, and I've never tried flutter lashes, but let me tell you guys, I'm actually obsessed. These ones are, like, spiky. They remind me of the Velour lashes in Doll Me Up. So first, I start with applying them with my finger, and then I will just kind of put down the outer corner, and then I will take my tweezers for the inner corner. My fingers are too, like, fat and stubby for me to 
like, use my fingers, because some people can apply lashes with their fingers, no problem, but your girl has used some tweezers because my fingers are too fat. So I just kind of apply them, and then I will pinch them together with my fingers. I think that that's a good trick that I have picked up along the way, is I will take my fingers and I will actually pinch my lashes with the false lash and pull the band as close to my la natural lash line as I can possibly get it. And that kind of helps um, with the... It doesn't look as fake, I guess you can say. Um, and you can't really see your natural lashes, which I hate when that happens, when I see someone wearing false lashes. And you can, like, see their natural lashes and the band of the false lashes. Plus, I love these because these are, like, so black. And now we're on to the skin, and I'm going to be taking Makeup Forever Step 1 Equalizer in Smoothing and applying this all in the areas where I need it. So that's in my T-zone. This doesn't really keep me oil, like, oil-free, but it definitely fills in my pores. And then I'm taking Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. Um, this is the shade 3N1, but I'm mixing it in with my NYX um, like foundation mixture, like the white one, because that helps like alter the color of it. So I did that just to lighten it up a little before I get too dark. So then I'm taking this brush from A-V-Y-A Brushes. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, they do have an Instagram, so if you guys want to go check them out, um, look for the spelling down in the description bar, obviously, because that's where it's going to be. I really do like this brush. It's very similar to the Artiste brushes, and I have not tried any of those, but this is great for keeping a full coverage look, and I really do love a full coverage look. This won't absorb any of your product like it would with a beauty blender. So that's kind of like my thing. Like I love a beauty blender, but when I want a full coverage look with my foundation, I just easily will take this brush and kind of buff it over in circular motions. And now I'm going to be taking Naked Weightless Concealer, and I'm using actually the shade Medium Light Neutral instead of Light Neutral, just because my foundation is getting a little bit darker, so I didn't want it to be such a stark white under eye. So I thought, why not just add a little bit of a uh, medium color to my face, and we're just highlight highlighting like normal and taking the Beauty Blender and just uh, buffing this into the skin. I really like to make sure my Beauty Blender is super, super damp, so it will absorb a little bit of extra product, because I do like to... I literally like to cake this concealer on so, so, so much, but that's just my preference. I use a beauty blender because that will absorb the product later on. So that's my little tip there. I know you guys see me using so much concealer and I go through so many tubes of concealer. Like I swear to God, it's like once a month or once every month and a half, I'm going to get a new tube of concealer, which is kind of excessive, but I mean, a bitch has got to be highlighted and concealed. So there you go. Um, you don't need to use as much as I do, though. And then I'm taking a Sigma brush, which I am actually obsessed with. It's a tapered one. I will leave the exact number down below. And I'm taking the Laura Mercier translucent powder and setting underneath my eyes, which I'm obsessed with. This brush is so perfect. It gets right in my inner corner and sets my under eye. And I like to use it for in between my eyebrows and in between my forehead. So it like it's just easier and it's smaller and then I'll take an elf complexion brush and a little bit more of that Laura Mercier translucent powder and just setting the rest of my face and then we're going to bronze up my skin because I felt like I'm looking really pale here and I'm taking the hula bronzer by benefit which I have been recently obsessed with I've gotten a little bit of color like a little bit is, like, better than me being Casper. So that's why I can use this bronzer. Usually when I'm very, very fair, I cannot use this bronzer because it really looks so orange on me. It just does not work out for me. But in the summertime, this bronzer looks so beautiful on me. And I'm not really contouring too much. I'm just kind of bronzing underneath my cheekbones. And it's kind of just contouring me at the exact same time. Now we're going to be taking a Makeup Geek's new blushes. And I'm using the shade Pro Romance. Romance. This is Romance. I almost said something else. Romance. And I'm obsessed because I did not need to use a highlighter today. So this blush is like a peachy blush. Very si similar to my Sigma blush that I'm obsessed with. Except this has like a pearlescence to it. And it is absolutely stunning and gives me, like, a nice glowy look without being so overly highlighted. Because I do notice, sometimes I go a little ham with the highlighter. But I've been obsessed with this blush recently, so there you go. And then I'm just going to be cutting my contour with that Laura Mercier translucent powder. Because you just got to fix it up sometimes, you know, so it's a little bit more structured. And then we're going to go with underneath our eyes. And I'm taking the Makeup Geek... Um, eyeliner, and I think this is just called Nude, and I wanted to apply this in my inner corner, or in my waterline, because I wanted to open up my eyes a little bit more, because we were going to go in with a pop of color on the lower lash line, so I didn't want to be closing off our eye too much, 
And that was my little trick. I don't ever usually do this, but I kind of really wanted to. And then I'm taking a Morphe um, flat definer brush, and I'm taking the shade Love Letter, and I'm going to be applying this super close to my lash line, really just building up the pigment. These are very pigmented shadows, but since this is like a purpley pink underneath my eye, I really wanted to make sure that it popped. And then I'm taking a mixture of Love Letter and Venetian Red mixed together on my on my Morphe E18, I think this is called. And it's just a pencil brush. Any pencil brush will work. And I'm just going to start blending out that lower lash line and really take my time blending it out, making crazy facial expressions as per usual because, hey, if you got to blend it out, make whatever facial expressions you have to. Whatever works, works. You guys feel me? Like, look at me like a, a demon is possessing me. It's fine. No big deal. So, after that, we're going to be taking a little bit of that roller lash and just applying it on my lower lash line. Not my favorite for my lower lash line. I did love it before, but mm, sadly, I'm not anymore. And then I'm going to be taking the shade Vermeer and the Anastasia brush that comes with it and just highlighting my inner corner. And then I also lost the footage of me highlighting my brow bone, but I also highlighted my brow bone if you guys want to create the look, just to let you know. And then I'm taking the brush that I used with Hula Bronze Hula Bronzer, and I'm just dusting away that um, bakeage action. It just kind of helps it blend out a little bit more than the ways that I was doing it before. And then I'm going to be taking Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lipstick in Catherine. Obsessed with this shade, guys. I really haven't worn this on camera, but I love this shade on my lips. I just feel like it is so complimentary, and I thought, why not do a nice pink lip with this Kind of like neutral, but pop of color eye. I thought, why not just add a little bit of pop to my lips? <laughs> and I really do. I love her formula. You guys know it's my top number one favorite formula out there for liquid lipsticks. It just, I feel like she does a great job. They wear so nicely and you can eat and they literally don't disappear at all. And I'm just overdrawing my lips a little bit, not too much, but just kind of overdrawing them. But my, I think my lips look amazing with this lipstick on. And that's all that I have for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next one. Mwah.